Hey, it's Anfa. And yes, I haven't washed my hair in a week. Still looking pretty decent. In this short video, I want to show you something pretty crazy that I figured out, and that is how to use a sampler plugin to achieve a time warping effect that we can control very precisely. What I initially wanted to do is something a bit like wavetable synthesis, but this turned out to be pretty cool. So let me show it to you. So here is an empty Ardor session. And first thing we need is an audio clip that we want to time warp. So maybe let's try and record some singing. I am recording random vocals so we can process them later. Woo! Okay, d don't pay attention to the bad performance. This is not important. This is just a test clip. Okay, so f now I'm going to export this so we can drop it into the sampler plugin. So I'm going to call this, oh, we can just call this region. Let's let's change the name of it and call this uh, sample zero one. We could also normalize it once we're at it because like it's going to make it easier to process later. Okay, so we're going to export it to 24-bit flak because that's good. And here it is. Now, you see, I've created a second track here, and this is synth v1. Actually, I think this is called with a smaller letter by Rui Nuno Capella, who is also the creator of Q Tractor and a few other plugins like Pad v1 or S Drum K v1. So, this is one of the more sophisticated sampler plugins that we have, and it has some options that are pretty unique, and that is you can Oh wait, it's a synth v1. I needed sample v1. Okay, so here is sample v1. Let me load the sound we've rendered. So I can right click, open sample, and now we have this thing. And I can just drag it here. Or here. Actually, I can't drag it anywhere. Okay, I can just copy this path. Uh, let's do it right here and now. Okay, we have the sample loaded. So now what we can do, you see, there is an option to enable offset and we can just drag these handles. Now if I... So the thing is we can automate this switch so we can play each note starting from a different position. And we're going to make every, each note very short. First, I want to disable the LFO, disable the filter. We don't need these. I'm going to turn on the volume to maximum. I am Effects. I am and I want to turn down the release. I am okay, the attack is very short. That's good. <laughs> All right, now we want to automate this offset start. So, you know what, I'm gonna make it stay on top. So we can just have it on in here at all times. Aha, uh -huh. there we go, perfect. So now I'm going to, actually we don't need this track at all. I'm just gonna hide it. So I'm going to go to Automation, Processor Automation, Sample V1, and then we go to Gen 1, which is the generator, Offset, Start. Yep. And this is what we need to automate. Now, if I move this thing, you can see that the Offset Start moves, and this is the same slider here. Now, of course, we need some MIDI notes, and I would like the note that would play this in its original pitch. And... Because we have C4 selected here, we need to play C4 to get the original pitch. So that's the note. So you see, if I do this, we get that funny repeating voice. Uh, trying to fit everything on one screen, not that easy. Now if I make this automated, and change this to play. Okay. Okay. You see, this is the basis of the effect that we were after. Um, 
okay. we're playing different notes. If I cut this and make it longer, you can see that, like the offset, and on the weakest them later. The offset updates only when we hit a new note. So we need to put the notes really densely if we want to have any decent resolution of this time warping. So I'm going to duplicate this range, this, this MIDI region. I'm going to consolidate the range and now compress it even more. So you see we have very densely packed notes. I am recording random vocals so we can process them later. Woo! And now we can play with the attack and release. Maybe if we make this. I am, I am recording random vocals so we can process them later. Woo! So basically, now we are playing back the entire sample that was loaded over the period of these four bars because we just simply automate this offset from start to finish with a straight ramp, but this ramp doesn't have to be straight. We can just do something like that, like pause for a while, right? Oh, yeah, we go. Oh, so we can process them later. Right, we skipped some part and then we paused the time and oh, yeah, you can see like this moves. Oh, so we can process them. Okay, we're not precisely pausing because these values are not identical. But if I do edit, control C, now right click here, edit, paste, and we have the exact same value. Uh, yeah, we so we can process now we can do some other crazy stuff like uh, go back. Uh, yeah, we, uh, yeah, we, we might think that well, that's a bit too little time resolution. Well, let's consolidate these nodes and time stretch them again, compress them four times, so we have even denser nodes. Uh, yeah, now this sounds a little bit This sounds a bit dense. Uh, maybe we can just shorten the release. Because we can have these notes overlap. There is a certain polyphony here. I don't even know if it's limited by anything. Let me see effects. Oh, by the way, it has a built-in limiter, which is on by default. I don't even know how it works. I don't know what's the polyphony of this sampler right now, but I think it plays everything we throw at it. Oh, we can, we've hit a, a limit, like, we could hear that there was a limit of, of the played notes and we had some silence, so if we shorten this. <laughs> now, if we want to have something a bit simpler, like maybe just time warp this so of course this not this is not clean like don't think that you can like i don't know correct some vocals and get some clean time fixes no the, you should edit the vocals regularly if you want that i'm thinking about you know achieving some weird effects that could be useful and creative processes ah why doesn't it select now, where does it, this start? Uh, yeah, the cool thing is that if we... Okay, here is the woo. I want to go forward and then go back. Ah, uh, okay. How about we stretch that woo for a longer period of time? Let's. Now I have auto return. Let's press five, no, six on the keyboard, and we're up. Okay, we're it's it's ah, it's just like near the end. Just need to skip some more. Yes. Now, maybe the density of the notes is too much. We can also alter that depending on where 
this is used. Like we can just have these interleaved and like you don't have to have yeah maybe that lower note density is a bit better but we could make it a bit longer not to mention, we can use the mod wheel to pitch shift this stuff. Uh, sorry, pitch bend. So by default, it's I believe this is two semitones. If we go, there's going to be ten semitones. I don't know. Let's go. Uh, automation bender channel one. And I believe now we can basically pitch shift this thing up and down as it as we go. Oh yes, but it would be pref preferable if we just consolidated this all because whoa, that's weird. Don't want that many points. I am recording. Oh wait, it's in a discrete mode. I don't want discrete mode. Online near mode, yes, thank you. So you see now. So you see, the fun is we are like controlling the pitch of every single slice, and every single slice is a single note we are playing right here. Independently, that means we're changing the pitch independently of the timing and we're controlling the timing with this offset automation. So we have independent control over the timing and the pitch. So this is like a manual way to do crude pitch shifting and time stretching, time warping. Why time warping? Because, well, we can do whatever we want with this automation curve and um, just, just go back and forth. We can... It's not like scratching, because scratching would, like, combine the pitch and the timing, and we are, like, decoupling that. And, of course, it's full of artifacts, but sometimes you don't want something clean. Sometimes you want something interesting and, you know... Many great things in music has happened because of flaws, like, you know, guitar distortion. Yeah, so that's what I wanted to show you. Uh, have fun with this sample v1 time warping. Maybe you'll find a use for that. And if you have other ideas, share them in the comments. So yeah, that was a quickly made video. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something. Also, big thanks to everyone who supports my work financially. I really appreciate that, and I was very surprised to see a lot of new patrons coming in during this time of self-isolation. Uh, that was surprising, and I'm very grateful for your support. So, uh, if you would like to join these people and help keep this show going, please go to patreon.com slash anfa or liberapay.com slash anfa. Now go, grab sample v1 and maybe make some music.